Welcome to Awakened with Victoria Bond. I'm your host, Victoria, and I am absolutely honored to bring you this podcast where we will be getting raw, real, turning up consciousness, removing the old energies that do not align, and turning up our capacities as human beings and spiritual beings. I will be bringing you mediumship. I will be bringing you channels. I will be bringing you points of view that will shift your perspective and realign your body, your mind, and your soul. Enjoy this ride. This comes from my heart to yours. And know that while you're listening to this, indeed, you are helping to create this. Enjoy the ride, and I'll see you inside. Hello everybody and welcome to today's episode of Awaken. I am Victoria Bond and I am delighted to be here. I am sitting currently in front of a list of names. I'm going to be doing some entity clearings today. But before I do that, I thought I would sit in this beautiful space and be a contribution to you. And thank you for being a contribution to me. Let's talk about what is happening. There is a bucket load of energy at the moment. We are having highs and lows. We are going through waves and surges and spikes and lulls. You name it, it is all happening on planet Earth at the moment. So this is where the party is. Party is always full of drama, highs and lows, <laughs> and that is what a good party is, and that is what we are experiencing at the moment because we're choosing to experience this. And it's the degree that you desire to experience it at is completely up to you. It is your choice to the degree that you experience the drama and the highs and the lows. So, speaking from my own perspective and my own experience I've been noticing especially the last couple of months the last three months around about uh, there was a build up coming to April and I was waiting pretty much all day I mean all year for April I was like oh my gosh it's April it's going to be happening in April April came and a whole lot of stuff happened within April and then of course now I feel We are energetically going down again. And when we go down, so we're coming down the side of these these heightened kind of spikes. Now we're coming down, we're downloading at the same time. So I do want to have a little talk to you about these surges and these spikes and these lulls and the energies and the downloads and all that type of stuff. Because people are all coming to me and saying the same thing whoa, I'm needing to sleep 12 hours straight, you know, for three days in a row, or I'm so full of energy, I'm so good. But the consistency is actually not that consistent. The self-regulation has been something that's been coming into my awareness because I'm noticing my highs and lows. And I'm noticing when I'm choosing to feed the drama, or to feed, you know, the exhaustion, or to feed the whatever expression I'm playing in, whether it's the high expression or the low expression, I am aware that that is my choice. So I'm, I'm away at the moment, and I just had dinner with my auntie and uncle, so I'm staying with them at the moment, and um, we had the news on the whole time, and I find this a very interesting time when you're at somebody else's house having dinner with somebody else, Uh, to observe how you feel and also observe the room and observe what's happening on the television and all the things. And I found myself complaining about food prices, um, talking about how ridiculous all the gun stuff is and how all these different variants of this and that and all these different creations um, are happening. And all of a sudden, we're getting quite heightened. Oh my gosh, it's ridiculous. Why do they focus on this? The news is so negative. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. And I'm like, wow, I just literally created an expressed like opinion, a point of view, a consideration, a judgment. And that's exactly what the news wanted me to do. 
So then I, I then I kind of laugh it off and think, wow, I just bought into that. Man, they're really good at that programming conditioning stuff. Because the thing is, they don't care which way they're programming you as long as they're getting a reaction, an expression of the highest or the lowest um, form, right? And it's completely our choice on how we do that. And this is the thing with these energy surges and these lulls and these spikes. We've got the collective energy. And the collective energy, which like I just experienced when, when I was with my family and we're watching the news and whoa, we went through quite a few waves just in that like 45 minutes. Um, and I was like, wow, I was like, I need to go back to my own place and detox right now um, because there's a separate building here that I'm currently in. So I was like, I need to go and have no television, put on my, you know, candle, get out my wand, get out my smudging sticks and, and my crystals and all the things and clean out what I just experienced, you know. And of course, we get to take full radical responsibility, which I talk a lot about in my podcasts and in my coaching. Full responsibility on how we are reacting. And if we are choosing to react from a high level of consciousness, then we're not reacting with points of views and judgments and considerations. And this is where people are getting confused. They think they are right about their point of view, about the guns, about the, the variants, about the food prices. Every single person thinks they are right about their religion or their beliefs or their parenting style or their relationship style. Every single person believes that they are right. But we don't even consider other people thinking that, that they think they're right. We just think that they're wrong. <laughs> and it's this hilarious loop that Luke and I have been talking about. Well, we think we are right about this and they think they're right about this. And then what if everybody is actually right? What if everybody is wrong? And this is when we have to start acknowledging that there is a lot of paradoxes around us. There's a lot of polarity around us. And the whole thing is one illusion, really, for us to become more conscious or to pretty much go along with the machine and get programmed and conditioned to fit into a mind system, a mind control system. And we see this in the various religions and we see this in the, all of the systems, really. It's everywhere in front of us, including the television. And what I found absolutely fascinating was the fact that I could be in a house with other people and our egos, our points of views, our considerations, our judgments, our rightness pretty much got us off. Wow, we're right about this. How are they so stupid? What is going on here? Rah, rah, rah. And I just bought straight into that, baby. Because it's like a game. And it's not until I realize now, okay, what expression are we buying into, which is determined on where we are currently feeling, where we currently are at in the energetics? What expression are we in? Because you see a low wave, a medium wave, a high wave, none of those waves are right or wrong. It, they just are. So when I work, I work with a lot of, um, I use human design, it's threaded through all my coaching, and a lot of my one-to-ones will message me and they start going into points of views, considerations, judgments, changing their mind on what they want to launch and what they want to do and how they're feeling and what they, they, they go through all this process as they're messaging me. And then I will say, how are you feeling? Are you on a wave right now? Especially those ones that have got the solar plexus defined. So they're an emotional authority. And they go, oh, actually, yeah, I, I think I'm in a bit of a low at the moment. And I go, okay, well, I wouldn't be buying into that expression and, and changing all your life plans while you're going on a down load. This is the time that you're meant to be receiving and nurturing and really wrapping yourself up in that divine feminine energy, not the wounded feminine. 
not pushing for the masculine, you know. You, so where are you currently at energetically? And then uh, that is where you decide how to act, to react, or should I say, instead of react, to receive in any circumstance, whether it's a complaint, whether it's the news, whether it's um, something happening which you uh, fundamentally disagree with because it's against your belief system, if we react to something that is not of consciousness, that is of point of view, making something else wrong. So when we understand how to move with these energies, how to move with the wave and the surge and the spike and the lull, we get a greater understanding that there is no wrongness in any of this, it just is. So with my client, after I had this conversation, I said, hey, you know, well, if you're, in a, if you're going into a, a low, then you know it's not the time to be making any rash decisions, especially if you're an emotional authority in human design. You know, you need to let that play out. I say the same thing to my best friend. I'd be like, are you, are you going into a bit of a low? Like, where are you at in your wave? And she'll be like, yeah, I'm just feeling quite low. And I'd be like, okay, yeah, maybe just don't worry about work or anything else until you're feeling energetically back to baseline, right? Because the, the opposite of that is people, they get on highs. So they get on these tangents and then they want to rule the world. And, you know, the expression which we've been programmed to be, this is how you should be. You should always be on. You should always be high. You should always be friendly. You should always be happy. You should always be available. You should always push, 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 push. Be all the things. We've evolved so you can be all the things now. But actually, when you're on a high and you're going through this, whoa, what happens when you come down off that high. Even when you come back to baseline, you'll be like, damn, I looked at my diary and I just literally booked in so much stuff, which I can do when I'm on a high, but I'm not on a high anymore. And now I feel like, you know, I just kind of want to rest and self-regulate, come back to that baseline and reset Pivot if there needs any pivoting. Readjust. Realign where I'm currently at. Reflect. You know, so this is why, and this is what I've been noticing, all of this is really amplified right now. And as a projector, I'm like looking at it going, whoa, I'm telepathic here. I'm literally feeling energy here. I'm feeling that person's energy here. I'm like, what is happening? It's nearly like I'm seeing the energy and I do see it, but I, I, I'm seeing it everywhere. So much so that if I don't self-regulate myself in these energies and be at that baseline and know where I'm at, know where my soul is at, my spirit is at, my body is at, my relationships are at, my business is at, know where I'm at and be like a willow tree, be really grounded in my soul and my purpose, then I can literally get really tied up as an empath. Oh my gosh, I'm feeling this, I'm high, I'm low, I'm la, 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 la. And why wouldn't I? Because if I'm not grounded, if you're not grounded and you're a true empath, or you're even, even sympathetic, if you're a person who sympathizes with people all the time because you know you deeply feel what they feel, if we don't know what the difference is between our energy, other people's energy, and the collective energy, then how the hell are we supposed to live? Because we don't even know what the difference is. So therefore, we're just living in this, this mess of energy where we're high and we're low and then we're drinking, thinking that's going to self-regulate, smoking, eating. This is why we have addictions, because we need something to bring us back down or bring us back up. You know the story. You know, you, you, if you haven't been like this, I certainly have. Um, you will know someone like this. You drink coffee. I still drink a lot of coffee. I love coffee. I have like two a day, right? But you drink coffee. It keeps you going. 
um, or energy drinks or chocolate or sugar or, or whatever. And then it gets to five o'clock and you're like, wine time. Oh, you know, everyone has their one, two, three, four, five limit. You know, so I'm presuming most people have, you know, two to three wines. And then you're like, oh, better have dinner and a cup of tea now. Hustle, 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 busy, 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 sleep, have a shitty sleep because you've got all of that alcohol and sugar racing through you, wake up, do it again. I did that for years and years and years, trying to regulate myself. Or you smoke weed because, or or have other different medications, whatever, maybe some prescription stuff, like stuff to chill you out or so you can sleep. People do these things to survive, you know, so I'm not judging nobody. But can you see where you may have had an, a pattern or an addiction because you're simply trying to self-regulate the energy, which is actually your birthright to understand the energy and to use the energy to understand it to the point where it works in your favor because you are energy. energy. And what you go through every day in your surges with the spikes and the lulls and the waves and the the lunar cycles and the period cycles and all of that, the year cycles, I mean, we're always, we're always in a cycle. We're always transitioning from one thing to the next. You're going from one year to the next year. You're older. We get older and we change and we shift. But somewhere, we decided that energetically, we had to buy into everything else. And ultimately, where we're trying to hustle, 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 bustle, 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 we're trying to go so fast to keep up with the collective energy, we essentially are slowing ourselves down because we're missing the point. And the point of what we are trying to do is to become more conscious, but we're doing everything in our power unconsciously to self-sabotage that because we're desiring experiences of wholeness. We want it all. No one is ever always satisfied. Think about it. No one is ever 100% satisfied. Grant Cardone, I'm listening to one of his books at the moment, and it's Be Obsessed or Be Average. It's, it's just such a good book because he is quite obsessed. Um, he's definitely not a projector. I would say he's more many gen <laughs> And he's just like, he's a maniac. He's just like, goes, 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 goes. A bit like Tony Robbins in that aspect. They just go for it. They just go for gold. I could never keep up with that, right? But I love what he talks about, be obsessed or be average. I love it. And he what he, what he says is, you know, People are literally, literally saying that they're satisfied, but they're not. They're not. They're just settling. They're just being, they're trying to be average. No one is ever fully satisfied. Otherwise, they wouldn't be in their addictions. They wouldn't be doing the drinking and the smoking and the, they're trying to self-regulate on coffee and trying to continuously plan things just to give themselves a little boost so they can get through the job that they don't enjoy and their relationship that is not full of love and all that type of stuff. So when people say, yeah, yeah, I'm happy, you know, it's like, well, I don't know, are you? Are you happy or are you just numbing and trying to be satisfied because people say be satisfied with what you've got, better the devil that you know than you don't. Don't change too much. The reason why I'm bringing this up is I really desire to inspire people with no judgment, but with just simple awareness to look at their energy, to look at themselves with unconditional love, appreciation, acceptance, grace, and compassion. And when you can look at yourself like that, with no judgment, when you are going through all of these different energies, these highs and these lows, and also we have the baseline where we're like, yeah, we feel really good. I'm quite regulated right now. It's like, well, hold on, because you know you're not going to be there for long, right? We 
we're not going to not experience highs and lows. It's never going to happen because we're having a human experience and we've got the collective energy and we've got the people around us. So we are energetic beings and we're feeling things all the time. But like I said at the beginning, to the, to the degree we want to feel it is entirely up to us. So, you know, for myself, I can, I've i literally been such a drama queen where I've just literally been like, oh my God, change is happening. I'm going to just create chaos. I'm high, 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 low, low, low. And I'm like, oh, that's right. I don't function that way anymore because I understand where I am energetically and what is required. So if my my cycle is due, if my period is due in a few days, it's like that week before, I really go into a divine feminine mode where I look after myself and I energetically am gentle with myself. So I don't push too hard. I don't book in like tons of clients or lots of free stuff. I I'm not like, oh, yeah, I'm going to have hair and makeup every day. I'm like literally in a hoodie wearing slippers or wearing my onesie and doing as little as possible. And I do just what's fun. And I work from the bath and I work from my bed and I go on holiday and I work from the beach, <laughs> all these things. When I come out of that cycle and say, for instance, I'm in, I'm in ovulation, I'm like, what? Yes, I feel like I'm higher. And I know that I can get a lot of stuff done then. But I'm also aware that that is short-lived and I will come back to this baseline where I can maintain. But the problem is, and you know, you've prob- if you've been listening to me for a while, you, you probably understand what I'm saying here because it's not anything new. I just say things in a slightly different way. That's a part of my HD, a different flair, a different flavor. Um, but if, if you haven't heard this before, you'd be like, what the hell? Okay, we weren't taught this. You weren't taught to, hey, before you get your period, just chill out, relax, you know. Um, oh, if your sister is due to have her period, just just be quite kind to her and understand that she's downloading information. Like, you'd be like, what? <laughs> and no one's ever said, hey, you know, you're allowed to go into those downloads, those down lows where you are actually get, receiving information and we will leave you to it. And your appetite might change as well. And you might not want to work like a maniac. You might want to work, you know, 10 hours this week and then other weeks you might want to work 60, you know. And this is a thing and this is where we're going into this next level, this next paradigm, if you will, is this 5D, which is all about emotions and it's all about unconditional love. But because we're so used to functioning from the survival mode, people think there's something wrong with them when they're going into a lull. They think there's something wrong with them when they're emotional. They think there's something wrong with them when they're high. People go, hey, yo, you're too high. Come back down. So it's not really how high you go or low you go. The self-regulation is about the awareness of where you're going and how long you're there for, what to do in that time and to pretty much let things pass, like let things flow through, you know. And when you start functioning this way, and there's many people that do, especially if people are aware of the HD and they're aware of uh, if they're spiritually based so they they know about the different cycles and the lunar cycles and whatnot, it's um, amazing because you can just say to somebody, hey, you know, I'm an emotional authority. Do you mind if I get back to you tomorrow on that? Or, hey, I'm just, you know, in a little bit of, uh, um, I'm in the lower part of my wave at the moment. Or, um, you know, I'm just going through some downloading upgrades at the moment. So do you mind if I get back to you in a few days? I'm just really looking after myself. And this is the, the types of stuff that people who are spiritually aligned, they say. And the other person goes, oh, absolutely, of course. But there's this whole other concept of, you know, take the invitation, like strike while the iron's hot, work while, you know, your, your, your hay is there or, or whatever, <laughs> you know, uh, make hay while the grass is growing or, or whatever. And we're just not there anymore. So people were coming to me and they're asking me questions. How do I navigate this energy? And how do I know what is mine? And how do I actually love myself all the time? 
And what I have to say to that is every day is completely different. And it's about having the tools, not making anything significant, anything. And as a 3-5 splenic projector, I find my energy quite interesting because I'll be saying to my coach one day, I'm going to launch this and this and this and this and this. And then a week later, I'm like, you know what? I'm just wiping everything and I'm just going to focus on one thing for the rest of the year. And she's like, great. (laughs) And then a week later, I was like, I've just had a download. This thing has dropped in. And I'm just always rolling with it and not beating myself up and not sticking to anything unless it's energetically aligned at that moment. But I've been known to scrap whole programs. I've been known to, you know, not not pull through with something or to shift something, to change something or to expand something, like to extend it out or to do it again and again and again and again um, because I'm always going with the flow of how I feel. And to the rest of the world that is conditioned with their stickability or their you must do this, you must be in this trade for the rest of your life or you should do this because you're good, people think it's it's freaking crazy. But I think it's my normal. I honor my cycles. I honor my own waves. And I certainly honor those who have got really high waves and really low waves. The self-regulation comes in with how you are being in that awareness and how you are reacting. Because we all have the waves. That's the thing. Every single one of us. And even if you're not an emotional authority, you amplify other people's energies. So quite often I go and I'm away. Like at the moment, I'm away from my family for a few days because I'm aware of everybody's energies so intensely that I desire to be alone to clean out all of my own energies, to reset, to realign, to pivot wherever I need to pivot so I can be the best version of me and I can come back to the baseline to understand what energies are mine and what they what are not mine. So we think that people that have been doing this for a while or teachers or so-called experts would have this down pat, but they don't because it's forever changing and shifting. And it can be literally overnight where you go, I've decided to change something. I will sit with that and I'll let that ride out. Or I've never been this high or I've never been this this low. Or I've never noticed colors so bright. I've never activated so hard in my life. Or I've never slept for so long. I've never felt so this or that. And this is a thing. We're humans and we're having the experience. And because the collective energy is a part of that, the thing that is happening, and this is the thing, you think, well, I've been doing this self-development for 28 years, or, you know, I'm I'm intuitive, and I'm this, and I'm that. I used to say this. I'd be like, oh, I need a coach who is like, I know all the self-development stuff. I've spent hundreds of, hundreds of dollars, thousands of dollars, actually, hundreds of thousands of dollars doing this. I don't need self-development. So I signed up with my coach and what we did was just (laughs) self-development because it's always self-development. Everything is self-development, every single thing, because there's no answers. It's a continuous moving train of energy and energy is faster than light. And we are that fast. We are always shifting. Our bodies are continuously, our cells are dying off and regrowing like every day. So we are continuously changing and shifting. Plus, we're activating it, our DNA at the same time. So going back to the collective energy, the collective energy is shifting as well. So we can't ever have the exact same waves or the same uh, reactions. We can put ourselves on loops and stuff, but the truth is nothing is ever the same. Every single day, every single moment, we are different people. We're different beings. We're evolving continuously. So when people are coming back to me and they're asking me the same questions, or if I'm asking my coach the same question, I'm like, oh, we maybe we're stuck in a loop right now because nothing is ever the same. Yes, you can go reach your targets and your goals, of course, but 
the reason why they say don't stick to anything like glue is because everything is continuously morphing and shifting and changing and evolving. We see this in our children. They grow so fast. They go from, you know, not being able to talk to literally talking back and running rings around you like within two years. Like (laughs) that's how fast we're evolving. So my point and my intention of this chat today, this riff about energy, is to simply not try to find the answers, but maybe actually bring out your tools, your toolkit, right, and go, what is required? And this is what I love to teach in Magnificent Mediumship. It's not about the answer, It's really, when it comes to your own personal development, your spiritual development, your wealth development, your relationship development, all of that stuff, it's always development, right? It's always about being in the question. And you've probably heard me say that um, in the past as well, because I'm always saying it's it's about the question. I just did a whole post and it was just questions just recently, actually like an hour ago. And The question is forever shifting and changing. So there is like no right and wrong. There is no good or bad because everything just is. And everyone is always going to think they're right. And if you want to be right, that is totally fine. You go and you go find those answers and you be right. But don't think that everyone's going to agree with you because your right is not right for somebody else. And that's just literally the truth. Not everyone's going to agree with you ever. And the more we try to convince other people, and we see this in religion and politics, the more we try to convince people that we're right and they're wrong, the more push you get, the more push and pull, right? The more, you know, go away, fuck off. (laughs) You were an asshole. Why do you think you're better than me or that you're right and I'm wrong? Right? We see this in relationships, toxic relationships. I'm right, you're wrong. But once we realize that that is just ego trying to find the actual answer to anything is potentially ego based, then we start realizing maybe we just don't know anything and there is no answers because everything just is and it's continuously changing. And that is a scary place to be at the beginning because you start becoming more aware And then you start becoming aware that what you're aware of, you can't put any tangible kind of words to. It's very hard to explain that to become conscious is to know nothing. And the more conscious you become, the less you know, Uh, because we're always trying to fight, you know, tooth and hook. Uh, I don't even know what that, that saying is, but we're always trying to fight for our rights. And we're always, you know, we're taught to judge because it was survival but my point being is we've gone beyond survival and we've come into this thriving 5d creation of our reality and it's you you know to prove my point is I have a certain amount in my bank account and that has stayed the same for six months, I decided I want to, wanted to up it, right? So I said to my husband, let's just up that baseline because I don't want it to go under the certain amount. And he was like, sure. And I was like, okay, cool. So I literally just dropped down my work big time. I'm a projector. So this year I'm really focusing on honoring my energy. Hence why I'm sitting on the ground with crystals and candles right now and smudging sick, just about to do some clearings. And um, no TV, no sounds, just me. And I really want to, you know, honor myself this year. Interesting enough, I've done one third of the work I did last year because last year I pumped out quite a few wicked as awesome programs. This year I have done one and it's the middle of the year. Um, I've got a mastermind going as well. And I'm going to be starting a program again soon on the 1st of July. I've literally done like a third of the work as I did this time last year and my money in my bank account is sitting the same the money that's come in this year has been the same actually it's been a bit more I believe and I have done literally I've had less one-to-ones less people less programs 
And that was all by choice. My bank account hasn't changed because of my points of view on what I'm expecting. My worthiness and my money does not come from how much I work. And once we start understanding that we're creating all of this, including the the so-called bad, the shit that's happening, the sickness, the illness, the drama, the, the shit, once we take that radical responsibility and go, oh my God, I've been choosing this. What is the beauty of this? What is the gift that it's giving me? Which is what I say to my clients all the time. Why are you choosing that? What is the gift? There's always a gift. So when my husband and I decide that we want our income to rise, that we, we want the work to, to lessen, but the impact to be like way bigger, what happens? That's what happens. So energetically, we have to match the money. Energetically, we have to match the outcome that we are choosing, but we never, ever make it significant. So we always say, I would like this amount of money or more. I would like this amount of impact or more. This is my minimum. This is what I'm choosing. I would like to energetically be able to regulate myself before I hit any loops. I would like to pull out my tools of consciousness and choose what to use when I require to use it because I am a being who has been here many, 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 many times. And I know many, 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 many tools beyond this earth whether it's entity clearing or whether it is a clearing statement or whether it's a question or whether it's moving my body or whether it's shifting my perspective or my mind or whether it is uh, talking it out or projecting it out is a big one for me, just speaking it all out and then sometimes just deleting the message. Sometimes it's listening to a podcast or listening to Grant Cadone, <laughs> who's who's my interesting um my interesting choice at the moment, which I'm loving, or whether it's just simply sleeping or having a bath, I know what I need to make sure I don't make my high or my low significant. I just know that it is, and I will ask for ease in every way that I'm doing that. So a lot of people come to me and say, I'm desperate. I just can't get out of my head. And I'm like, well, if you can't get out of your head, then... If you're saying that, then you can't get out of your head. You're choosing that. And that is why you're having that. So why are you choosing that? What are you hiding from? What are you not showing up? Where are you not showing up? Who are you not showing up for? And this is what happens. People coach with me or you find a coach and the coach will always say, well, you're choosing that, aren't you? But a lot of the time people want to be fixed but there's nothing to fix because who are we to fix other people who are we to be fixed who are we to even fix ourselves when there's nothing to be fixed because we're already perfect because we're getting exactly what we chose whether it is reacting to external things the collective or to our own moods like I'm in a bad mood now you pissed me off my husband used to do that he goes you pissed me off now you said too much and I'm gonna be shitty and now I laugh and I go babe if he ever does, I'll be like, I'm sorry, please don't be shitty because you know what? There's just no point in holding on to that because the only person that's getting hurt is you. And then we kind of laugh because how ridiculous are we when we're trying to blame other people for our own energetics? When we can shift this fast, we can go from homeless to millionaires this fast. We can get out of off our ass and move it and get fit and healthy. If we want to make money, all we have to do is create it and ask for it and receive it. Instead of reacting, what if we started receiving? Interesting concepts. So I'm going to leave that about now, about here, because I'm starting to feel my energy fatiguing. And I'm going to honor that so I can go ahead with my next step, my next energetic process. But I would love to hear from you. Did any of this make sense? What was your favorite takeaway? Do you know somebody who requires to hear this? Is there somebody that is functioning from unconsciousness who requires to be woken up? These transmissions will wake them up. 
they'll probably pass them out first. A lot of my clients will sit there and just pass out and, and fall asleep in the middle of session. And it's a beautiful thing. One of my clients actually, um, there's a meditation, it's an activation for the root and the sacral. And she listened to it every, oh, every other day uh, for a month, fell asleep every single time until the last few where she actually was awake through them. And that's because she finally got through the activation where she was aware enough that she could handle it, right? So every time I speak, I'm activating people with my words, not necessarily from Victoria Bond, but from many, 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 many different expressions and different lineages and different timelines and different dimensions of where I'm bringing this energy through. And a lot of it is to designed to really that paradox energy um, of not making the significance or the right or the wrong. I'm not here to teach. I'm not here to be the guru. I'm here to invite you to the possibilities of who you be. And who you be is never who you think you be. It is so much more. And this is why not making things significant or making things wrong or right, but being open to the possibilities and being in the question and knowing the tools and processes, which is exactly what my job is to do, is to share the tools and processes. And that's what I do in MM. It's not just about talking to dead people, it's to understand that you are spirit. And what do you think happens when you realize that you're spirit? You start seeing and acknowledging and being aware of the other spirits. It's, there's nothing scary about being a spirit. So I trust that you receive what you require to receive and I will see you next time. Listening to today's episode. I trust that you got those golden nuggets that you required to shift your consciousness, to expand your awareness and to turn up your capacity. I invite you to share this podcast with anyone that you feel would benefit from it. And also share the golden nuggets that you have learned with your friends, family, and of course, clients. You can contact me if there's anything that you want to specifically share with me and, or if there's anything you want me to specifically share on the podcast. You can check out the show notes and find me on my socials and myself or my team will get back to you. My heart to yours. Have a beautiful day and I'll see you soon.